dictionaries wouldn't be very useful if the only things we could do were create them and print them. We actually want to be able to use them and find key value pairs within them. So in this video we're going to learn how we can look up the value that's mapped to a particular key or even change the value that's mapped to a particular key. All right, let's get started. So how do we look up keys in a dictionary to figure out what values they're mapped to? Well, first, we actually need a dictionary. So here we have the cipher dictionary that you've seen in a previous video that maps strings that are single characters to other strings that are also single characters. And we're mapping all the characters in the, the word Python here. Okay, And so if we print that out, we'll be able to see that dictionary. But you can also see it defined right here in the program. Now, how do we figure out what the string t is mapped to? Well, we use indexing kind of like we used with lists. However, in a list, the index was always numerical. It was a numerical index that was the offset inside of the list. Here, the index is the key itself. So when we have cipher, open bracket, the string t, close bracket, we're saying what value is mapped to the key which is the string T. Similarly, when we have cipher open bracket and then the string N close bracket, we're saying what value is mapped to the string N in this dictionary. All right, so let's see what happens. All right, as we can see, when we printed cipher sub T, it printed out N, and when we printed out cipher sub N, it printed out P. If we look back up here at the dictionary, the string T is in fact mapped to the string N, and the string N is in fact mapped to the string P. Now, let's actually use our cipher dictionary to do something interesting. You may be wondering why I called it cipher. Well, it's because I'm going to use it as ciphertext in order to encrypt strings. This is going to allow me to take characters out of a string and convert them to different characters, and then I will have an encrypted string that nobody will know exactly what it is. All right, so let's take a look here. I have a function that I call encrypt. And you can see it takes two arguments. The first one is a cipher dictionary, and the second one is a word. And then when I look at what's going on in the function, I start out with an empty string, which is the encrypted string that I'm going to return ultimately. And then I iterate through all of the characters in the input word. And for each one, I look that character up in the cipher dictionary and get its associated value. I add that the resulting value to the encrypted string and finally end up with the entire word encrypted or basically remapped to the values from the cipher dictionary which I can then return. All right? Let's run this and see what happens. All right? You can see that I started out with the string python. All right? Interesting. And I get back the string ontip. Okay, now I can send the string on tip to my friends, and if they know how to decrypt it, they'll know I'm actually sending Python. You're in on the secret now, though, too, all right? Now, what happens if you try to look up a key in the dictionary when there is no mapping for that particular key? Well, seems like that might be a problem. Let's find out. And yes, it is. We get something called a key error, and Python tells you what you tried to use as a key that it did not have a mapping for in the dictionary. So what do you do here? Well, one way to, to help you out here is to use the get method of dictionaries. If, you not, if you're not sure if the key exists, but you still want to try and look it up, you can call get. So here are three cases. First, I'm going to call get with the string t. I know that is in the dictionary, so let's see what happens. Then I'm going to call it with the string 1, which is not in the dictionary, so let's see what happens. And then finally, I'm going to call it with two arguments here. Uh, let's just see what happens, and I'll come back to that. I still have my key here. I have to comment that out. OK. So, when I called get on t, I got n back. Well, that's right. We know that t is mapped to n in the cipher dictionary. When I called get with 1, which is not a key in the cipher dictionary, I get back the Python value none, basically indicating there is no mapping. Right? 
And maybe I didn't want none though, or maybe I actually do have things explicitly mapped to none in the dictionary, so that becomes confusing. I can provide a default value that I would like back, and that's what this final form of get does, where I ask it to get the value that is mapped to the key one, and if there is none, I would like z back, right? And that gives you an easy way to have a default value. And you can see here, one is not in the dictionary, so I got z back. Now, Let's just quickly here say, hey, well, what happens when I call get with a default value and it is in the dictionary? Let's just confirm, okay, we did get back n, all right? So either it gives you back the value that's actually mapped to the key, or it gives you the default value back if there is no mapping. So I hope you're starting to appreciate the value of dictionaries. I have these mappings from keys to values, and I can look up what is mapped to any particular key by using this indexing notation or by using the get method. And then that will tell me what value is mapped to this key, right? There are a lot of interesting and practical uses here, one of which I just showed you, right? We can encrypt a word. But there's more. Dictionaries also allow you to update the key value mappings, right? So we have our cipher dictionary that we've had so far, and I want to modify what the key P is mapped to. So again, I use the indexing notation. Things are very similar to lists here, where it, to update a key value mapping, I use the indexing notation on the left-hand side of the equal sign with the square brackets where the index is the key that I want to update. And then on the right-hand side of the equal sign is the new value that I want to associate with that key. All right, so I want to change the mapping of the key P from being mapped to O to being mapped to Q. And let's see what happens. Well, in fact, it is exactly what happens, right? Originally, my dictionary maps P to O, as you can see here. And then after I modify the key value mapping, P is now mapped to Q. But wait, there's still more here. I can create a new key value mapping in exactly the same way using the same syntax, all right? So if the key that I'm trying to update is already in the dictionary, it will just change what it is mapped to. If it is not in the dictionary, a new key value mapping will be added to the dictionary. So let's run this, okay? And here we can see that there is a new mapping from the key R to the value Z now. So I have a new cipher dictionary. Let's run encrypt again and see what happens using my cipher dictionary that has been modified with updated mappings. And you can see originally when I encrypted Python, I got on tip. Now I get king tip, I guess. In this video, we learned how to use dictionaries. You've seen how to look up a key in the dictionary to find what value is mapped to that particular key. You've also seen that you can update the value that's mapped to a particular key, or even add a new key value mapping into the dictionary. This allows us to create things like our encryption function where we can actually use these dictionaries. Hopefully you also have a little bit of an appreciation for the design of Python when you see that we use exactly the same kinds of indexing syntax that we've already seen when we've looked at sequence types like lists. The only difference is that the index now is a key into the dictionary rather than a number that indicates the offset within the list.